Welcome to the In Her Skin Knitting Podcast. My name is Maria and I'm coming to you from the northeastern part of Italy where it is raining today. Um, so I hope the lighting is not going to be too horrible. Um, and yeah, I am excited that it's getting a bit cooler so I can start to reintegrate the wooly layers again in my wardrobe. Um, it's not quite uh, cold enough yet for sweaters, but I am wearing knitted socks that I don't know if I can show, show them to you. <laughs> I'm wearing my Fiorellini socks, um, which is my first sock design. And yeah, I think I published a pattern earlier this year, I think in March or April. Um, and I it didn't get a lot of wear back then because it was already getting too warm so i'm excited now to be able to wear these socks <laughs> um yeah today i will talk about my wedding dress which as you can see here i did not end up knitting <laughs> um, but i did end up sewing it and um, crocheting some appliques for it so i will be talking about that and also about what i've been knitting since after the wedding because before that i was working on the dress and uh, my parents were here so i was traveling a little bit with them um, but yeah in the past week um, it's been a bit more chill so <laughs> i've spent a lot of time knitting finishing projects and starting new ones so i will be talking about that and at the end i'll probably talk a bit about what i plan to sew in the next few weeks so if that's not any of any interest to you you can definitely skip that part but yeah i guess i'll start with the dress the if you watch my latest episode you'll know that my plan was originally to knit it um, and i did start knitting it i have a tiny tiny piece of knitted fabric here that was supposed to be the dress and then for several reasons including the lack of time um, and also because I was getting increasingly worried that this would be too warm because it's in mohair silk mohair um, I decided to sew it instead talk a bit more about that after <laughs> but this is what I had um, when I decided to abandon this project and just to sew it um, so the idea was to do like a v front and v back situation and after i was going to come and crochet some some sort of like a little cap sleeve um, and then the rest would have been a bit like cinched at the waist and then a bit flowy it was still undecided what it would look like exactly, but yeah, so this is what it was looking like. If I can, yeah, that's better. And the yarn that I was using was Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the color Powder. I really need to buy a camera. This phone is not doing it for me. <laughs> but yeah, this yarn, and it was slightly pink. Um, which is another thing that I was kind of unsure about when I was starting to work on this. Um, I thought maybe it's a bit too pink. And so yeah, all these things considered. And also the fact that my, I was going to say my boyfriend, but I guess my now husband, <laughs> um, he also was pretty last minute to buy his suit. Um, but then when he did find it, it was like a pretty fancy suit, <laughs> fancier than I think we had originally like planned for, because the goal in the beginning was to just have like a very simple, very casual wedding. Um, there was only 10 people total attending, including us. Um, so we didn't want to do anything too crazy, but then he bought that suit. And then I felt like, Ooh, okay, maybe I need like, something a little bit fancier myself <laughs> and so after that we went to a store that carries some fabric and um, i found this very nice 
silk and before finding that i thought okay i'm just gonna buy like a viscose like a white viscose maybe um, but then i saw that fabric and i literally had like a <laughs> moment of like oh my gosh this is like very beautiful i've never felt anything like it i don't know if you can see like the drape of this but it's very nice so i guess i will show you the whole dress <laughs> What it looks like try to focus on it there we go so as you can see it's this very nice silk fabric um i had a bit of a, a moment in the store when i first saw it i had to go home and to think about it for a few days because <laughs> it was it's definitely the most expensive fabric i've ever bought in my life and i was terrified of cutting into it and so i went back home to make sure that i had like a really good plan because at first i wasn't really sure what i was going to do i had a pattern in mind that i wanted to um, use as a base but modify and so i didn't know even like the yardage or meterage that i would need um, of the fabric so i went home i did my homework i think i did like three toile um so like three mock-up dresses with random fabric that I had here um, to finally um, settle on this silhouette. So it's basically a... I based myself on a pattern that I had sewn before which is the... and I'm blanking now, it's a pattern from Pretty Mercerie which is like a French fabric store um, the Negara dress. So it's a dress that had like an open back and sleeves and I think the original version was like a mini dress but I had seen that a lot of people were using that pattern to make their wedding dresses um, and just lengthening it and some people were using like a lace at the back that looked very nice. Um, so that's kind of where I started. Um, and yeah, and then I, I, I don't know how this all came to mind because as you can see, there's a lot of little crocheted leaves and flowers like this. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I decided to add those. I think probably because I thought that if I just do a white silk dress, it's like too plain for me and like I need something on it. And so I decided to, oh yeah, that's what happened. So in the beginning, when I was still knitting on the dress, um, one of my friends, Gabriela, <laughs> she reached out to me on Instagram and said like, oh, I saw your podcast and just uh, be mindful that, because she also got married in the north of Italy in September a few years ago, I believe. Um, and she said that, she had knitted herself like a cardigan and it was way too warm on the day of to wear it so she was just like keep in mind that it may be too warm and then she sent me um a japanese knitting magazine um this one i'll put the picture of the cover and probably the link to the ravelry um, page down in the um, description box um, but she sent me that uh, saying like if this is of any use to you and then in that booklet there was one pattern that i really liked um, that has like a i think it's an irish crochet lace mesh or like knit in the top and then like something a bit more opaque at the chest and a lot of little flowers and leaves um, and so i thought okay maybe i can do something like that to like crochet like a top piece um, I didn't end up going that route because I think my skills are just not good enough when it comes to crochet <laughs> with these tiny things like that. But I did a lot of tests. Um, I'll show you a few here, but like something like this that would have been like on the top here and then the rest would have been fabric. Another one here with some little like flowers throughout. But 
everything that I did ended up looking quite, I don't know, it wasn't looking very neat. So I abandoned that idea and I decided, I think at that point, to just sew it. Super simple. But then a few days later, I think I saw something on Pinterest. Um, this picture where like the open bag had some, I don't know, like a tool mesh type of fabric with some applique flowers. So I thought, oh, maybe I can do that instead. So this is what I ended up doing. Um, so you can see at the back, that is a like see-through fabric like this, where I put a lot of different leaf appliques and little flowers like this. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's how I came about like the silhouette, the idea and everything. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I have much else to say. It's basically all like all the crochet pieces. I didn't actually follow a pattern for. I just, I think I found like a, a pattern for like a single of these little leaves like this. And then I just like freestyled the rest. And the part that was the most difficult for me to settle on was what kind of flower to make. I, again, I have like a ton here that I tried and I wasn't satisfied with any of them. Like this was one of the flowers that I tested, but I thought it was too like cutesy. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. So then I ended up again, just freestyling something more like this. I thought it matched better with the little, little leaves. And something else that I did that I'm very proud of is how it closes at the back. So like this, so like the two uh, leaves are joined together with a little uh, crochet button. So I, I'm just gonna try to show you. I did a little button on one of the sides and on the other side, I crocheted basically just a chain for the um, buttonhole. So I can, I can close it this way. And I think the original plan was for me to wear my hair in like a low bun so you could actually see this part. But I ended up wearing my hair down at the back, like a half up situation. Um, just because in my mind and when I was doing my mock-ups of the dress, um, I thought that the back wouldn't be this open. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't know, I felt maybe a bit too exposed. So I decided to wear my hair down so we couldn't really see this part, but I still like this little detail. <laughs> and yeah, so as I was, Saying, and I don't think I finished my thought on this. I used the Megara dress pattern um, as a base because it does have like an open back like this. Although I think it's less open that pattern, if I remember correctly. And I used the, so this is from the pattern, but the rest is all either self-drafted or very modified. So the little cap sleeve I self-drafted. The skirt is just a bias cut skirt that I self-drafted. And the back is the pattern, but slightly modified. And yeah, in terms of the construction, I had to be a bit creative uh, with how I was assembling this. Um, and there's some things that are not very well executed. And um, some things it was because I didn't know how to do it and I just didn't have the mind space to really like sit down and figure it out. Or I knew how to do it, but it would just be too complicated and I would have to like restart a few of the parts and I didn't want to do that. And so essentially, I think it looks very nice on the outside, but the what I'm not super proud of is how it looks like on the inside. <laughs> 
<laughs> like for example, like the facing here at the back, uh, at the front, sorry. But when you look at it on the wrong side, I didn't finish this edge because I did try to finish it and like on an, a separate piece of this fabric and the so I tried to finish it with my overlocker but the it created like a like you could see it essentially from the front because it was too thick and so I just left out the finishing there and for the I don't know if we'll be able to see but for the seam where the sleeve is attached I mean you can kind of see here it's this is unfinished also I decided to just leave it like that and kind of put some of the leaves around to try to hide most of it. And then on the inside here is probably the part that I'm the most embarrassed to show because it's, <laughs> I would never do this on like a garment that I wear every day, like for everyday wear. But since this is like a, something that I'll wear only once, I um, cut a few corners, let's say, and here I finished this, I don't know, it's not even a seam, but like I, I just folded like the fabric on the inside and basically glued it down to the fabric using um, interfacing, like the, the type of interfacing that you iron on and like sticks to the fabric. And I can already tell that in a few places, like that glue is not holding up, but it did its job for the day of, so <laughs> I'm fine with that. Um, and yeah, the same thing for like, there's a piece of um, facing at the back of the dress here that I didn't finish properly, but no one saw that. <laughs> and then the part that I'm very pleased with is actually the invisible zipper. You can actually see it on the side though, which is not great because it is transparent fabric. So you can see like here, but I think I installed it very nicely. Um, I think it's the invisible zipper that I've installed that was the most successful to date. Um, I watched a lot of tutorials on YouTube before doing it and really took my time to not mess things up and I think it went pretty well. So yeah, I think that's all I had to say about the dress. Oh no, I have one more thing dress related, but kind of. So another issue, not an issue, but something that I didn't anticipate is that this fabric is like very very like clingy and so in terms of undergarments I had to be quite um, strategic with what I was going to wear and like on top because of the because of the open bag I went for like a stick-on bra and one that I already had here and it wasn't like it, it was a bit too pale like lighter than my skin tone so you can kind of I think you could see it when I was wearing the dress which is unfortunate but whatever <laughs> there was no time to solve that problem um, and then the other thing is I like in terms of underwear on the bottom um, I bought these shorts of like shapewear um, so that you wouldn't see panty lines, I guess. But then I bought them and I tried them on with the dress. Everything was fine. But then I turned around and so at the back of the dress, show you like this, there's no seam in the middle here. And so with these shorts, there was like a, a seam that goes down the back and you could see like very, very well. It was not very nice and so I was very happy to have a serger <laughs> so I fixed it myself using the serger because beforehand it was a seam like this which is that an overlocker because overlockers and sergers I think are not the same um basically there's like two types and one can like 
um, so align like like this like on top of two basically in the middle here I don't know how to explain this but like a serger you can't do that you have to like go like this with the fabric folded and so this type of seam is good for typically like when you want something that is very invisible but in this case we could see very well this seam so I just ripped it out and searched it like this on the inside and so on the outside it was actually fine <laughs> so yeah this was I was happy to have my serger for this um, and yeah I think that's it for the dress I will op hopefully have um, put a few pictures um, of me wearing it um, my I was gonna say my boyfriend's brother but I guess now I can call him my brother-in-law <laughs> he um, just bought a like a fancy new camera a few weeks prior to the wedding and so he was kind of um, tasked to <laughs> take the pictures um, and so yeah he took pictures we uh, didn't receive those yet um, Davide thank you if you're watching this and there is no rush for these pictures <laughs> But yeah, I'll try to put the ones that other people were taking um, so that you can see the dress, I guess, in action. <laughs> and yeah, I will put this back. Okay, I feel like the lighting is very dark. Oh, now it's too exposed. Let's see. Okay, next thing is... A pair of socks so I have I think I had one um, finished last time so these are the Pointez socks and it's a new pattern that I wrote and it's actually been ready to go for the test knit for a few weeks now but I didn't want to launch the test knit at that moment because things would have been too hectic in my life but now they are uh, ready to go so this is what they look like i really like the little um scalloped cuff um and there is there will be a tutorial for um how to work the cuff and then the rest is pretty standard um there is a lace chart to follow to do these little flower motifs down the front and at the back here and then yeah, like I was saying, the rest is pretty standard. It's a cuff down sock with a heel flap and gusset, a slip stitch heel, and a regular wedge toe, and a little eyelet um, row here at the bottom before the toes. So I, yeah, like I said, it was the pattern was ready to go for a while. I just had to knit the second sock also, and so I finished. It, I think two days ago and I still need to block it so we can maybe do a little before and after blocking does wonders <laughs> you can see that like for example the scallop cuff looks quite rough before blocking but after you block it it's very cute like this so yeah I haven't uh, written up like a google form yet for a testnet call but I will do that and it will be down in the description box so if you're interested to test these socks you can apply there um, i think they are i um, graded them for four different sizes i always try to do like the most amount of sizes that i can um, and like for this one for example i think that the smallest size is a 60 stitch um, sock uh, because it was difficult to grade for um, smaller sizes just because of um, the stitch pattern so yeah that's it for the pointed socks just a small little update and yeah I feel like these now they're more like summery vibe I think because of the color that I chose but I was talking to my sister and she said that 
you know, if you use a, a more fall colored yarn, it would also be very nice for fall. So <laughs> I'll take her word for it. Um, and hope that some people still want to make this. <laughs> and it's actually Socktober. Today is October 1st. Um, which means that for us sock knitters, it's a nice month of, I don't even know why. I think it's just because the name sounds cute, Socktober. <laughs> so it's, um, I guess, a month to celebrate hand knit socks. And I think I would like to film an episode where I talk only about socks. I have been wanting to do that for a while now, but just never have taken the time to do so. Um, so I think that I will try to film like an, an episode with like my favorite socks, like my favorite patterns, my favorite yarns, um, and maybe also a few fails because I have a lot of socks and some are like completely felted some have holes in them so i can maybe you know do a little analysis of these things <laughs> and yeah so i'll try to get that done at some point during the month um and then i was listening to uh marlene's po podcast <laughs> marlene knits um and she was talking about a cow that she was hosting like just a very casual knit along in instagram group chat with a few of her friends um and i decided if i i decided to join them um because they were knitting the dopio sweater by sungi Han, i think sungi knits on instagram um so they were yeah knitting that sweater and re-watching gilmore girls which I also do, I think, yearly. <laughs> it's like one of those guilty pleasures slash like comfort TV shows for me. Um, in fact, I think the day before the wedding, I was driving my parents to the train station and I got stopped by the police. There was just like a routine check, but I got stopped for that. And I think with like, everything else that was going on I was very stressed and when I got home I was like okay that's it I sit down now and I work on this sweater because a few people um, in the group chat for the this cow had already um, started and I mean I had started this sweater a year ago um, but I hadn't started like interacting with the cow people <laughs> yet <laughs> and so when that happened I was like okay I need a bit of like comfort knitting and Gilmore Girls watching <laughs> so I sat down to work on my Tokyo sweater and so it's, if you've been watching um, my channel for a while you'll know that I started this sweater I think it was maybe in November last year, so almost a year ago now. And for some reason, I don't know why, I stopped after I separated for the sleeves, probably because there was some other projects that I wanted to knit more on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so when I saw that they were having this little knit along, I thought I would join. It would give me the perfect opportunity to um, to finish this sweater to have a bit of motivation to do so because yeah i don't know it's more fun to do with other people right <laughs> so this is uh my version um i am using many many different lace weight yarns like this so they're all in like pink shades and some uh, brown um, most of these gains are things that I bought, you know, when you're traveling and you go to a yarn store and you're like, I want to buy something, but I don't know what. And then you just end up buying like a random skein or two. That's what I had in my stash. And so that is what I decided to use. Um, they were all things that I didn't have enough for a sweater or some like not even for a whole accessory <laughs> so, <laughs> so I decided to combine them all together to make a sweater and so this is what it looks like so far I don't know if you can tell yeah I think you can tell 
that the yolk is a bit more like rusty looking and here you kind of lose that rustiness and then here even more um, that's because I had to do a bit of um, fading I guess of the yarns because I was running out of stuff <laughs> so in the yolk I have a silk mohair that I completely ran out of but it was a bit more rusty than this one and so you can tell that when I switched to this one we're losing like the rustiness this and then I thought that I would also run out of some of the yarns that I'm using here um, because I still have the whole body to do so I decided to also do the same thing and fade um, in the ribbing for a, an even lighter color so I think I'm using six strands total everywhere um, and here I think here I removed one of the like darker colored yarns like this and added another one that is a bit more pale like that so I'm like slowly fading it um, I finished now the collar since I started to work on this again which is a folded collar and both sleeves <laughs> like this and now I just need to do the body um, and I have this much yarn left over so I think it's going to be possible I just don't know how I'm going to fade it because from the collar to the sleeve I'm going from dark to light and so I technically if I want the same look for it to be coherent in the body then I would have to do the same but I have more of these darker colored yarns I think <laughs> than the lighter ones and so I don't know if it's going to result in something that I like like I don't know if now I'll go like a bit lighter and then go darker again if it's gonna look weird I don't know let's see but even if I'm not like fully satisfied with this uh, it's gonna be a very cozy sweater regardless that I can worst case scenario just wear at home I feel like I say that all the time if I don't like it I'll just wear it at home <laughs> um, but yeah I think I am following so far the pattern pretty much to a T I think the only thing that I've done differently is when I picked up for the collar there's the option in the pattern to um, work a crochet chain all around and then you in that chain you go to pick up your stitches for the collar I did actually try to do that at first but I think I was doing it a bit too um, tight okay sorry I had to take a moment to adjust the lighting because my my phone that I'm filmed with is getting old and she doesn't want to focus anymore like autofocus with the lighting I don't know if you know what I mean but anyways <laughs> uh, what was I saying I think I was talking about the collar and the to pick up the stitches yeah so since I'm working with yeah I think I did it a bit too tightly and then since I'm working with six different yarns it was very difficult to get inside that like chain stitch to pick up a stitch for the collar with like the smaller needles um, and with these six different strands it was just not working out so I undid everything and just picked up stitches normally and I think it looks perfect um, you basically just pick every stitches from the collar and then knit it with um, smaller needles so you could even technically if you're making this um, start with the ribbing and then just go straight into the stitch counts that are for the yoke 
Um, but yeah, I didn't realize that before I started the sweater. I probably would have done that. I think I preferred that to like working the ribbing and then folding it and just going straight into the yoke rather than picking up stitches after. So if you don't like picking up stitches also, <laughs> um, that could be something that you can do if you want to make this sweater. Um, and yeah, I think that's, I did the yoke almost a year ago, so I don't remember if I made any modifications, but there is the option to do like a, um, a purl stitch in the raglan where after you can come and do like a fake seam. Um, so you just like create little V's. I don't know exactly how I'm not there yet, but I will do it. Um, so that it probably um, is a bit stronger there. And there's also the option to do that on the, on the bottom of the sleeves um, and along the body, but I didn't opt for those. So yeah, that's it for my Dopio sweater. Um, I just need to finish the body now. Okay, I'm back. My phone ran out of storage there. Um, I think I had just finished talk to talk about the Dopio sweater whip and other than that I have two sweater design ideas in mind but they're both still at a very early swatching stage so I think that I'm not going to talk about those now I'll wait a little bit until they're a bit further down the line <laughs> um, so yeah that's it for the knitting um, and yeah, I think with the like change of seasons, usually I, my sewing mojo kicks in a little bit. Um, I realized because in the summer I typically wear only dresses. That's usually what I find most comfortable, um, when it's very warm. And, but I was very excited to wear pants again, but unfortunately most of them are a bit too small now. <laughs> So, and it's been in, in my plans to sew more pants for a while now. Um, and I think last fall I made at least one pair, but they were cotton corduroy pants um, and they're not stretchy at all. And it's, yeah, they're not super comfy. So one of my goals was to um, try to make more stretchy pants <laughs> and so I some time ago I started to shop for um, stretchy denim fabrics and um, I like to order these little swatches <laughs> so I ordered from this website Tosca Italian fabrics and denim some swatches and I really liked this one it's like just a boring plain black denim um, but during the winter especially, I basically always wear black jeans and a sweater. It's like my winter uniform um, and I'm in need of a new pair of black jeans. So this one I thought was perfect and I ordered it since it's here and I washed it. So now it's ready to go. The only issue is that I think that I need to tweak the pattern that I typically use for jeans. Um, I typically, typically use the Dawn jeans and I think that it, it's made for a non-stretch fabric. So I think that it's not going to change too much. I think I can still make the size or maybe I'll have to grade a little bit. For a bit more room um, but I can I think get away with using that pattern more or less um, with a stretchy denim but the issue is that I think it's like the the waist is not high enough on me and so it kind of like if this is your waist and then it gets a little bit bigger like the pants sit there instead of here and so they're a bit too tight so I think I need to raise the um, rise of the pants, the waist. Um, and 
I have my Persephone pants that fit really nicely um, in that area. So I, I'll try, I think, to like combine both patterns. I don't know yet how, but I will try that. I have also this denim that I ordered online and I really wasn't satisfied with the quality. So I think that I'll use this one as to make a toile, a mock-up. I don't know if you can see, but like the quality is just not as good. Or maybe it's just me who's very, very picky, but it's supposed to be black, but it's blue. And there's like little lines going through and it's like too stretchy and kind of like plasticky feeling. I don't know, I'm not a fan, but I will use that to make a toile. Um, and this for the real deal. That's it for that. And I also have, I pulled like a few pieces of fabric that I've had in stash for a while that I've been wanting to sew with, but I just haven't gotten around to that yet. I have this, I think it's like a viscose twill maybe from, I think Maker Maker is the brand. Um, and it's like this super nice rust color with little flowers. So I am excited to make something with this, probably a little blouse. And then I have also this one that I really like the color of. It's like a, I think it's also a stretchy fabric. It's a corduroy, I believe it's cotton. It's like, I don't know, the color is not really picking up well. Oh my God, this is bad. <laughs> okay, I had another lighting issue, but here we are. I think this is uh, more true to color. Um, it's like a um, olivey, chartreuse military green. I don't know how to describe it um, accurately, but yeah, it's a bit stretchy. I think I have like one meter of this, so I'm not sure what to do with it. I was thinking of like a like a blouse with like a like pretty wide collar with maybe ruffles, like something like very feminine, if you want to use that word, um, for a fabric like this. I don't know. I think it could be cute, but I don't know if I have enough fabric. If you have a pattern that you think would look nice with this fabric, let me know. I'm kind of out of inspiration for this one like I, I want something with this fabric but i don't know what to make with it if that makes sense and so yeah i think that's it for now for today i will like i said try to film um a socktober episode soon um and yeah as always i hope that you are um, enjoying what you are knitting on um please feel free to let me know in the comments what it is that you are knitting on, I always like to know, um, to get also inspiration for other things to knit. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for me for today. I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>